Hey guys, today's video is all about everything that Ecuador does right in our eyes. And we also have a new intro, so don't fast forward. Stay tuned right after this. <laughs> I want whales today. Well, we're gonna see both. I and want we're the gonna whales. see some sea lions as well. Loving life here in Ecuador and the positives outweigh any negatives and that my friends is called living the life you love. Hey everybody. Um, so we're going to go through 15 things that we've noticed since we're down here um, that are totally in addition. They're like the icing on the cake, totally in addition to why we came down and we have the video, you know, our five reasons uh, for uh, moving to Ecuador and, you know, nature and climate and cost of living and, you know, all of that stuff, which we go into uh, in detail. But these are smaller things that we've noticed over the eight months, nine months, whatever it nine is. Months. <laughs> nine, nine months. Nine months that we've yeah. uh, been here. So that's why we entitled it What Ecuador Does Right. And to all you haters that are going to send uh, send me little messages about why you didn't talk about what's wrong <laughs> and why you're just talking about what's right. Well, we actually have talked about some of the things that we've been disappointed about. Like, you know, dog poop in the streets we have to dodge every once in a while. And some of the garbage that's left outside of the towns on you know, the size of the streets. video. But we've already talked about all that negative stuff. Yes. So, and, of course, the international media is telling you all about crime. Uh, and in our opinion, uh, you know, greatly exaggerated to what our living experience is here. You'd think we'd be dodging bullets or something if you believe everything. And uh, obviously we're not. Okay, so let's go to the first thing, which we're going we're gonna to start from small things all the way up to the biggest, you know, surprises that we've had there. So the first one is these plastic containers. So this is what I mean, these kind of things. See all these gooey things? So they come. We don't have these in Canada. I don't know if the States has it, but here they use it for everything. So this is for um, that sort of black asphalt you put on the roof. And it comes, you know, I'm not going to take, take it off here, but actually I will take it off. And there's this little tag that you pull and they all work exactly the same. And you can squirt just the exact amount you want. Now, isn't this better than working from some can or a plastic container where you're using some device here? You just put it right on. And then when you're done, you just roll it up and uh toss it toss it but uh, or, or recycle it here depending on what town you're in they do have recycling in a lot of the towns like san jose but it's not as big as like some of those big plastic containers that you get so yeah it, and you can use salsa as well everything comes in it eight different kinds of mayonnaise and what i discovered unfortunately is cheese spread you can actually take this off and put it a little dab on each individual corn chip. I've gained three pounds thanks to this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's cool and, and, and it is a small thing but uh, has made our life a tiny bit more enjoyable. <laughs> okay, the next one might be controversial. The hot, hot water on demand. Hot water on demand. Also, no one here in many places where they don't install it correctly has uh, 
suicide shower, right? <laughs> so you go into a shower, if you go to like an Airbnb or an older place and, and they've hooked up these wires and these wires are all hooked up to the shower and you're thinking, should I really get in here and have a mm. hot shower? Mm-hmm. But the idea of it is basically it's hot water on demand. So when the, and, and you can get it for an individual, individual shower or you can get it for the whole house, right? Uh, and we have it for our whole house. We have another one for the, for the jacuzzi, um, for the hot tub as well. So back home, they have hot water tanks, and you yes. have to keep the hot water um, heated at all times. So that's, yeah, that like, does add on expenses. I can understand why you would have that, mm-hmm. right? In a cold climate like Canada, in the northern United States, somehow they think it's smart to put all your hot water in this tank and heat it in case there's this chance during the day. And that was, sm- you know, if you have 10 people in your family, I get it. It might make more sense. But most people, it's just a couple with one or two kids. And you're heating that water at the hottest temperature so that you could have hot water when you turn on the tap instead of these these amazing gadgets where once they're hooked up properly and installed, and there's lots of stories when they're not, but once they're hooked up like ours, it's fantastic. The whole house is hot water whenever you turn on the tap. You turn it on, you have to maybe run it for like maybe a minute or something. If or, yeah, if you yeah. want, yeah. But after that, then it's hot water, and you didn't have to um, have it heated, waiting for you to use it. Yeah, it's yeah. way better for the environment, and yeah. they're like pretty cheap to buy as well. Cheaper than a hot water tank. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And Willow is here trying to be part of this video, aren't you? Aren't you? Yes. Okay, is, um, and now we're going to get into some people things that we did notice in our mm-hmm. exploratory trip. But we'll get a little bit more specific about it. And one is around, you know, respect and kindness of the vast majority of the people here, Mm. Um, which is pretty amazing. And we give some examples of that. Like one is, is when you have people over, Ecuadorians, we had a party here and we had some families over um, using our pool and having a barbecue. And what happens is when they all come, everyone, including the little kids, you know, there'll be four or five, and they'll come up and shake your hand, shake your hand introduce themselves, give you a hug, and then jump in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> the little kids, it's like, okay. But it's like, they, it's a genuine greeting first. Yes, everybody. Yes. And yes. then when they all leave, it's not like, uh, oh, goodbye, everybody. No, no, no. You, they, Each individual person comes up to you. Says goodbye to everybody. Says go- and they say goodbye to everyone. So if you're leaving a party, it might take 20 minutes if it's a big party. Because <laughs> you're saying goodbye to every individual person. And they actually even go as far as taking the dishes and just rinsing them all off. Yeah. And it's like, no, you don't have to do that. I'll do that. No, no. No yeah. problem, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So a lot, of, a lot of that sort of respect that you see, you know, on the streets, a lot of, you know, good morning and everything. And get all that. All the strangers. Or, yeah. yeah. And when you're in a restaurant... Um, and you're eating your food and the stranger could be walking by in the same restaurant to go order a meal or something or to go pay their meal they'll just tell you enjoy your meal enjoy your meal and we yeah. didn't know what they were saying at first it's like it's like why is this person talking to us so well, now we know and we feel like a fool for not replying half the time um, so yeah that that whole kind of thing and this sort of leads into the next one which is it's also in the respect, but but um, there's a real different view of seniors mm-hmm. and the elderly yeah. in Ecuador. Yeah, and it goes all there's the way the from, from how they're they're treated by the government with specific plans and benefits. So, for example, if you're over 65, you get your income tax. If you fill out the forms, you get your income tax, not income tax, your sales tax, which is 12% here, I believe, uh, and you get that back. So effectively, you don't pay um, sales tax. Any type of travel is 50%. And there's a whole bunch of other benefits, uh, even in like simple things like being in a grocery store. Um, they have a special lineup for um, in the bigger places, yeah, for the elderly where you can go. Um, so they haven't moved me yet. I'm like 63, so I uh, know 62. 
62. I always get my age wrong. 62. And so I guess when I'm 65, <laughs> if I look, if I get lots of gray hair, they'll move me from one line to another. I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, and also the respect in the, in the younger people for um, the elderly elderly mm-hmm. um, yeah. whereas a lot in North America I can't speak for Europe but in North America it's almost a disrespect it's almost like mm-hmm. you don't know anything you're an old person <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know I don't know it's it's but it's it's really noticed uh, noticed the change here um, which and also kind of leads into the next one yep. which is family centered yep. so they look after their whole family so the older, the elderly people, the family takes care of them. Um, yeah, like a lot of the expats groups, people will ask, who are coming down to retire, like, is there a lot of, you know, retirement homes and different things? And like, there's no. like hardly any. I think in Cuenca, there might be one or two and different things. And it's because your family, your family your takes family you on, takes care of you, obviously. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of what happens here. And it's normal. And mm-hmm. no one thinks twice about it. No. It's not even considered a sacrifice. It's no. like, that's what you do. That's what you do. You, uh, you know, you're you either move in with your parents or your parents move in with you. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and if you are an expat coming down and, and obviously your family's not here and that type of stuff, you know, getting getting nursing care and all that type of stuff that would normally happen in a retirement home, you can get very cheaply here. So I don't want you to think that, oh, there's no retirement homes. Like, what are we going to do? Well, you could have people coming to your house mm-hmm. on a pretty regular basis yeah. Uh, yeah. to help out. Uh, yeah. No problem at all. Um, and again, it's sort of keeping with the people theme is the uh, work ethic here. Oh, they are amazing. The work ethic is amazing here. Yeah. And we have first, first-hand knowledge. We've had people working at our house doing construction. If you've been watching our channel, you've been seeing a lot of that going on on the outside. We're now going to be starting some, some inside renovations shortly. Um, but they would be here around 8 o'clock. They would leave, leave anywhere from five to six, and uh, obviously they would have lunch and a lunch break, and that was during the hottest weather, and I just couldn't believe, you know, and every single day, um, it was just, you know, amazing to see, and we see all the different work um, that gets done around here and uh, uh, in other different homes and things as we do our beach walks and well, anytime it's, you need something done, all you have to do is like oh, yeah. WhatsApp the person. They're here instantly. They will make sure that the job gets done. It doesn't matter yeah. if it runs into um, nighttime. They're they're gonna be here until that job gets done. Yeah, so. like we had a transformer that blew up, and we had to call someone within 20 minutes. They're here. Um, it's Tell just, us what we needed. Yep. Drove you all the <laughs> way us, to, drove us to La Libertad. Yeah, yeah. Bought and, the new transformer. Uh, and then they were here installing it, like in the dark. Yeah. Like eight yeah. thirty, nine o'clock. And yeah. It gets dark here about six thirty. And we were so appreciative. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they were appreciative. They were yeah. happy to have the work and happy that we were happy. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, the other thing is uh, our next items around sort of friendly, positive, um, you know, and on the coast here, twank, tranquil, I can never pronounce that. Tranquilo. Pop- tranquilo people. <laughs> and they're living like a vibrant life and they're happy. And it's amazing what that does when you're around people who are upbeat and smiling happy, and all of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in I don't want to compare too much, but... You know, in Canada and the United States, there's a lot of political stuff that's sort of dragging that positivity down. And regardless, yeah, regardless of what your political views are, I don't think anyone really likes a climate where there's that kind of, you know, any anywhere from animosity to hatred of, of, of other people in the community for certain beliefs. It's like, who wants to, who wants to live like that, right? And uh, it's not so bad in Canada, but it's getting worse. If I I believe the social media groups that I belong to there Mm -hmm. and some of the fights that are going on, it's like, oh, why am I reading this junk? So um, that's certainly something that, you know, that'll be happening a little bit here, but hardly, hardly at all. Everybody, it's simpler lives, simpler times here. 
everything's pretty easy peasy, um, tranquilo, and nobody has really the worries. And yeah, it things happen. Well, they have worries, but they it's look at things worry, from a positive point of view. You know, they have yeah. worries around poverty and getting money and that kind of stuff. But they all take care of the each other as well, as too. much as they can. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The next one is fixing things. And oh, I feel so stupid the first couple of months we were here. And sort of we come down here with this North American attitude oh, we need to, you know, this thing's old. We it's need broken. to, it's broken. Throw it away. Oh, yeah. Toss that. We need to buy a new one. And of course, we had workers here uh, who were working outside. We didn't know that well. This was the early days. And of course, TV. anything we were tossing out, they would say, oh, I'll take that. I'll so like, take, yeah, take the that. TV was an example, yeah. and uh, we're like, you want it? It's like, broken. I, it's like, broken. <laughs> like it's going in the garbage, and he's like, no, no, can I have it? And we're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah take, take it. it then. <laughs> well, we found out a month later. He, he had it. He, he got, it got it working. And they're yeah. so happy. There's this, and it was like a 32-inch, and we live on the coast, so a lot of electronic stuff, you know, gradually breaks down quicker than if you're on the interior. Um, because of the of the breeze that we get, we open up the windows, and of course, you know, the electronics kind of with the salt um, gradually, uh, you know, disintegrate essentially faster. And, they, they uh, and so, yeah, they had that here. going. It was great, and then we and we noticed they fix a lot of things, like so everything. Your fridge, your stove, yeah, like yeah. you just don't toss it and go get another one. Yeah, um, like you actually do fix things, and it's and yeah. it's cheap. Yeah, so, yeah, really good for the environment yeah, too, right? It really is. Because North America, we kind of toss into the dump, it's literally. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, need to get a new coffee maker, let's just toss it. Well, they don't yeah. do that here. Yeah, and, ar- and along the same theme on their next item is we're not seeing, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen, so, uh, you know, sort of bear with us here, is, is, is we're not seeing the same type of spoilage in grocery stores. No. And you're the one who noticed that first, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, for instance, when I was in the grocery store, uh, I would go into, say, the meat section. Well, um, they have just what they think they are going to sell that day. So if it's out, it's out. Uh, yeah. There's no spoilage. So um, you either get the chicken breast if you wanted it that day, or you're not getting it. Uh, other things like uh, Mike's favorite uh, juice... <laughs> um, if you see it and it's there and you need it, you buy it then because it might not be there the next time you go. Yeah. They don't stock up on things. Yeah, yeah. No, so it's very you don't really don't see a whole bunch of stuff on sale because there's no spoilage. They right. only do enough to sell for that day or, or the next couple days kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, so we're moving away from all the people stuff, which has been amazing, and we're going to talk about some other things. So the bus system and the taxi system. Amazing, I just got to say. So forget the cost. The cost is dirt cheap. And, uh, you know, I think a bus from here to Guayaquil is, is what you're $7, $7 I think, yeah. around $7, and that's like a three-hour drive on a mm-hmm. bus. Um, so that's pretty amazing. And the taxi rides getting around here are, um, what, uh, 350 250 depending, depending on, on where you're going. Yeah, that's yeah. picking you up at your house and then taking you, you know, 10 minutes down the road. Um, it's, just, it's just fantastic. But what I really love about the bus system is, uh, which is really <laughs> cool, is is you don't pay when you get on the bus so the bus stops everyone gets on and then you know it'll stop three or four times and then there's another guy who works on the bus besides the driver and he will go and collect the money while the bus is moving so it's a lot faster to get from point a to point b whereas in north america you pay when you get on so you can have someone fumbling around trying to get different things or get it out of their wallet, their little pass, if it's a pass or the little token or whatever mm. you're paying. Whereas here, it's like on the bus. And they barely even stop the bus, which is <laughs> not so good for me. I know I'm going to hurt my knee <laughs> getting on and off that bus while it's still kind of in, in motion. But one of the other good things about the bus system, too, is that um, you don't have to make sure you're at the bus stop. 
Like, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. right. <laughs> you can stop be anywhere. like still 10 minutes away from the bus stop. You see that bus coming. All you have to do, wave down the bus. Yeah. They um, stop anywhere, pick you up. And yeah. if you want to be dropped off anywhere, they drop yeah. you off anywhere. And the so, vast majority of the buses are, are, you know, like really nice. Like from North America, they most of them would be the equivalent of like a great coach mm-hmm. bus of where yeah. there's a TV in there and air conditioning. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people say, oh, you're moving to Ecuador. And they have this vision of a, of a developing country or a third world country, which Ecuador is and it's a developing country. But a lot of people, they just don't know, right? And so, and so they think, oh, these buses must be filled like a school bus with people all over and... You know, all kinds of animals on. Well, there is the odd animal on the bus, like that, uh, that rooster. rooster that was sitting beside <laughs> you. But, uh, anyway, and then the taxis, because there's not a high percentage of the population that has cars, there's a multitude of taxis here, like tons. So yeah. this whole stretch where we live, uh, Montanita, Alone, Mangalore Alto, um, uh, San Jose here, there's like taxis everywhere. It's like New York City. Yeah, and they're beeping and at you all the time. Yeah. So if you hear a beep beep, turn around if you're looking for a taxi, and uh, he's giving you warning that he's approaching. Yeah, well, and if you need a taxi, there he is. Well, they beep more at you than me, so everyone doesn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> beep beep beep. <laughs> I know what that means. Um, <laughs> so anyway, enough about the bus and taxi system. Um, one thing we love here, most of the businesses, 95% of the businesses, once you get outside, actually even inside a lot of the cities, um, are family-run businesses, mm-hmm. which is a totally different experience than you get um, working in a, in a you know, chain or something, right? And a lot of businesses, I don't know if they even call them a business, but it'll open up at night where outside of someone's home, it'll come the grill. Yeah. And they'll yeah. start throwing some food on for That's people true. walking by. and Making juice for people. Yeah, they'll make yeah. juice. Like, yeah, in San Jose, there's yeah. one little table there with all the oranges to make the freshly squeezed juice for you. It's so like, I'm at home, by. I might as well uh, make, you know, a, few make bucks. a few bucks here. Yeah. So. so you see tons of that. And, of course, that makes the food so fresh, so amazing. The bakeries are, are incredible. Um, the restaurants, all fresh food. Of course, it's not regulated the same, which we'll get into some of that a little bit later because of that. But I would far, far more have all these family-oriented businesses without a ton of regulations as opposed to a bunch of stores with all these, you know, over-regulated, in my opinion. And one of the things that I love about that is that they are so happy to see you coming into their business. They go out of their way you know yeah everybody's like hello how are you what can I help you with yeah um, nice to see you again yeah. or like thanks for coming into my business they're very appreciative yeah, yeah. And you're almost afraid to negotiate it's a negotiating <laughs> we culture here really. we, well sometimes we do <laughs> sometimes if we know we're getting really ripped off which is hardly ever actually I know a lot of gringos talk about or expats talk about getting ripped off all the time and 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 to me it's not you know there's there's a few occasions where yeah you got to kind of put your foot down and say, no, 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 no. Walk away. But yeah. usually right. it's just a little bit more or, or the same. Or if, you're in the, if you go to the same business all the time, the price gradually gets less and less. Mm-hmm. Um, it's true. Like we order the same thing out so many different times, and it's always a different price. <laughs> Within a, within a dollar, it of each usually other. goes down like twenty five cents every time. It's like, well, how much is it going to be this time? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> and then once in a while, boop, back up again. It's like, oh, they're they're familiar with us. They they know we're uh, regulars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay, let's go on to the next one. So now we're getting into some of the some of the more serious ones, the bigger ones. So this one's hard to describe. So we call this one freedom. So we feel more free here. And, you know, there's, like in Canada, and, and I, know the, I know the United States is different, so you'll have to sort of, sort of look at it. But in Canada, there's a lot of regulations. Mm-hmm. Actually, I guess there's a lot of regulations in the HOAs in the United States. Um, but, but in Canada, there's like tons of bureaucracy around all kinds of things. And before I moved down, down here, I really believed in that, actually. I thought, oh, this is, you know, people need to follow rules. Companies need to follow rules. It protects people. So if you're really rule-oriented, 
Uh, if that's really important to you, um, you know, Ecuador may not be the, the place for you. But if you're looking for, you know, sort of less bureaucracy, less rules, and I know a lot of Ecuadorians won't, won't believe this, but they haven't lived in Canada, so they don't, or the United States, so they don't really see the, the, the comparison. Um, like that fruit stand. Yeah, like um, all of the food rules and things. Yes. Like a family business yeah. can just open on all up and they don't need 8,000 permits no, and they don't no. need the city to agree and inspect and their Back kitchen home, and all like that very, stuff. very, very... Uh, well, it stops small businesses. There's yes. so many rules and you ran a small business. It's, it's so difficult. Yeah. You almost have to hire someone to deal with all the... Well, that's what I did. Deal with all the bureaucracy for you. I hired him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like, was, you deal with this part. I was paid with kisses, yes. <laughs> and, and so, and a lot of the rules they do have here are not enforced. So that even no. makes it feel like there's, like there's less rules about uh, all kinds of different things. But I mean, buyer beware. If you, you know. Yeah, you like, have to be intelligent about it. Yeah, like, I don't know. I just, I don't really want to know what the kitchen looks like in there. I'm sure it's great and the food is great and... I'm helping a business and... Yeah. Yeah. So that's our other dog barking because another dog down the hill is barking <laughs> because another dog down further is, is barking. barking. So some kid about a mile from here is now causing all of these dogs to, uh, to bark. Part of Ecuador, which we've learned to love. Right, Chris? That was one part we don't really love, but... <laughs> but our dogs are part of the problem. They are, yes. <laughs> our two they dogs. Are. Yes. Okay. Um, modern banking system. Shocked. Because everything that I read and researched um, was around, oh, it's a cash, cash society. You got to line up to pay your bills at different things. And some of that is true. There, it is a cash society. You can't use credit cards everywhere. Um, well, especially on the on the coast here, the bigger stores and bigger restaurants, absolutely you can use uh, credit cards, no problem. Um, but what I found some examples, and this is the advantage of actually a um, developing country, is they don't have the old legacy infrastructure, so they can come up with neat new things a lot faster. Um, so uh, an example would be uh, paying a bill here. So when we get our electrical bill. So we have meters here, just like North America. The guy comes, reads the meter. I can see when he's here, because the dogs start barking. And, uh, <laughs> and within 24 hours, I can go to my bank, Bank Banco Guayaquil, and go into where I've saved my account number um, for the electrical bill. And that computer system that the bank has will go and talk to the computer system of the electrical company and see how much I owe. And uh, so this time, you know, we have air conditioners, we have uh, the pool filter going all the time. So it was like $132. Most, and, that, and that's high for down here. Most people pay like you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, depending on how big your house is and electrical and all that. But I can go find that out. In Canada, I'd have to wait for the bill to be available online um, or mailed to me, depending on kind of what you choose. And, uh, and then you would have, so the point is you have to know the amount and then you would go to the bank and pay that amount. Here, you don't need to know the amount. You don't need to wait for the bill to come either online or on mail. You go, and that works for everything. Um, they have something better than email transfers, in my opinion. You, you can just send send stuff off to to uh, you know someone's bank account, and mm -hmm. it'll check to see exactly whether it's that person you're sending yeah. it to. Because yeah. then the, all the systems are contacted together. Whereas back home, you, if you're doing an e-transfer, you're hoping that that's the right person that the, you're sending the, the money right to. The right email address, it, yeah. or else it could yes. go to somebody else. But here, uh, it's specifically... And you have to come up with some password, so they know the password, yes, and yes, you tell them yes. ahead of time the password. It's like, it's like archaic, in my opinion. The other thing you can do here that's really neat, I've never done it, is if you want to send money to someone and they, and they want the cash, you can actually... 
um, send it to them. How do, you, how do I explain this? It's hard to, to explain. The bank no, account. to the no, no, no. That's we already explained that. This is another method of where you can you can you can send it. You give them the code. They go to an ATM and they don't even need a card, and they can go and get that money out by putting a special code in the bank machine, which is this amazing. Is, this one's new to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've never done it. There's no reason for us to do or do <laughs> that. This one is news to me. Oh, well, the bank sends me advertisements in Spanish ah, all the time, so I translate go. them, thinking, "What's this all about?" Okay. And that's why I found out about uh, about that uh, feature. Um, also around, you know, the banking and, and the technology stuff, the, the cell phone service here is amazing, and the internet, um, right? So cell phone, we spend $10 a month, and we don't use hardly any of what we get for the $10 a month, and we recharge it every month rather than having an account and everything. The phone number's still the same and everything. Uh, it really works out uh, really, really well. Um, our internet in the house, we spend $42 a month. That's not the sale price. It's actually cheaper when you first sign up and get it on sale, but that's the regular price. For 42 we get like 450 uh, down and 450 up, which is amazing. In North America, usually in most places, you don't get down and up the same, although that's starting to change. Um, so a lot of that is, is, is more advanced. And one thing we love is WhatsApp. Why don't you tell them all about WhatsApp? <laughs> we <What>? love that. <laughs> well, yeah, WhatsApp's amazing there. You Everybody can... uses it. Oh. Everybody. For Businesses, everything. everything. Yeah, so, yeah. Say um, I wanted to buy these uh, couches here. I WhatsApp the person. They're in Guayaquil. They send me pictures of what I might possibly want. I say, yeah, I like that. You send the money to the, um, their business through the yep. banking system yeah. and uh, free delivery. <laughs> yeah, and how do you tell them where to deliver it? Because they don't really have addresses yeah. here so, in most places. Yeah, you do, um, on WhatsApp they have a feature that uh, you just attach click on, the location. attach the location and within like seven meters or something like that. So anybody can find you for deliveries, for anything yep. yeah and then they Taxi. come the dogs start barking we know someone's outside with a delivery there you go it's fantastic <laughs> it's really good cool. and, and it's only because it's not because whatsapp is so special it's just like a normal um everybody. you know messaging it's because everybody uses everybody it uses which gives it. it so much more power um you know but that's a great system here. And, and uh you know we can translate that's how we deal with a lot of stuff is, is you can translate within whatsapp yeah. And uh, and we actually understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, enough about that. Um, modern medical system. So, uh, we've met a lot of Americans who have come down, and their top one of their t top three or four reasons is is they uh, you know don't have uh, medical care in the United States. Uh, it's not really affordable, and so they head down here where it's very affordable, and I'll get into that in a, in a, in a minute. So they, so they have sort of uh, multiple systems here. So they have a private system, and they have a public system. And um, the public system, if I compare it to Canada, is worse than the public system in Canada. They have a lot of the same issues, but a lot of them are, are, are just worse. So longer lineups, a lot more wait times, that's what I mean by lineups, waiting for, you know, uh, uh, knee replacement or you know that type of thing if it's an emergency like Canada you're taken right away um, but more of the routine stuff you have to you have to wait the private health care is is actually um, really good and you get to pick um, from a multitude of plans and, and I would say that is significantly better than the Canadian system and and depending on what type of health care you're getting in, in the United States it may be better it may be worse um, uh, you know, you have to sort of look at that and, and uh, you can find a lot of information um, on a lot of the Facebook expat groups where people have had all kinds of surgeries down here very successfully and uh, both in the private and public system and they just rave about it. Um, but some of the things, oh yeah, so, so what, what we've gotten is, um, you know, we've been healthy, knock on wood, and... Um, uh, we just decided for this first year just to get a catastrophic plan in the private system. So what that basically means is there's a $5,000 deductible and anything above that 
Um, and that's why they call it for catastrophic care because to spend more than five thousand dollars here on something it's it's really bad and it's gonna you know go on for a long time um, so that sort of emergency care um, costs uh, Chris about forty forty six dollars a month and for me because I'm older uh, sixty sixty eight a month um, for another 40 or so dollars a month, we could have gotten something that covers everything and uh, another $40 a month each. And we decided not to do that because things are so cheap here. For example, we need like some the, antibiotics. Why don't you talk about that? Oh, gosh. So, yeah, like the whole uh, system, you don't need to go to the doctor here to go get a prescription or... Yeah, there you don't really need a prescription here unless so, it's heavy duty pain pain meds. Yeah, Other than yeah. that, so yeah, there's no making an appointment to go to the doctor and waiting around in there to go get your prescription to then go to the pharmacy. And, and with the doctor, you can only talk about one thing at a time one because <laughs> you have to make another appointment if you have something else you want to That's talk true. about. But here, I mean, you know what you need or whatever. So you for just, most things. For most things. So you just go to the pharmacy and you ask for that and they give yep. it to you. <laughs> yeah, and if you're bringing Easy prescriptions peasy. down from the United States or Canada, you can just show them the bottle or the prescription piece. And you they'll get the same get thing. The same you thing. just ask, this is yeah. what I want. And, uh, and yeah. they have virtually everything this, here. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah. The most, you know, unless it's some weird thing, um, they may not have it. Like and another thing. Um, but let's say you don't know what's wrong with you. What do you do? Okay, so we did actually have um, a couple friends of ours that um, came down here and, and they got sick. And they went to the doctor, which was like a couple blocks away and kind of like a walk-in thing. Nobody else is in there. So the doctor was in there gave them a prescription, gave them the prescription, and um, it was free. Because it was the public one they yes. walked into. So the doctor yeah. was like, there's no um, yeah. there's no charge for this. Yeah. No charge for the antibiotics, no charge for anything. Now in Canada, in the free system, you do pay for your prescription drugs. Everyone thinks everything's free in Canada on their health care no. system, but it's not. There's all these exclusions, and it really depends on your age to get the free, the free uh, medication. Um, uh, but the other thing too is is if there's something wrong with us here and this hasn't happened yet and we don't know what it is you can have a doctor and we're just feeling too sick you can have a doctor come to your house here for thirty dollars yeah. for a house call yeah uh, and they will figure it out and and give you a prescription you then phone that in not phone whatsapp, WhatsApp. you could phone it <laughs> in but you would use and we've done this part we've yeah. done the whatsapp for antibiotics we were on uh, two sets of antibiotics in eight months and uh and we uh a guy in a bike comes and delivers it yeah because on whatsapp you do the google yeah. translate or the um location app there and yeah and I think it was like a mo like like a typical amoxicillin um, with uh, something else was in it. I forgot. It was less than and twenty dollars, and that included 12. the delivery. It was yeah. twelve dollars. Yeah. For so, seven days worth of antibiotics. And that not only the medical system with um, like us kind of thing, but even the medical system with our pets. Like. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> I had to take my little Willow here to the vet one day, and uh, she wasn't doing all that well. Yeah. So bring Willow up so they can see Willow. She's on the <laughs> lap. There's Willow. our little Willow. She's so she our wasn't terror. Feeling, yeah, she wasn't feeling so well one day, so I had to take her into paws and. Um, That's a, a vet in, in a vet alone. And alone. And um, they figured out what was wrong with her, easy peasy. They gave me a prescription for her. And the prescription and the visit for that day was, what was it? I think like, it was $15, wasn't it? I think it was, $15. And that, yeah. made, that was... She came home with all this medicine. Actually, it might have been 20 or 25 no, no, I can't it remember. Wasn't. But it, it was wasn't. It was like $15. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, having their teeth cleaned, which we're going to get done here, you know, I was reading somewhere that that's quite cheap as well, like 50 or $60 in sort of that range, where, as in Canada, that's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Like 750 plus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, it's, 
pretty amazing. A good um, medical system what, here. Yeah. And um, what you can do, we haven't done it, I talk about it, is um, things like an MRI um, down here, depending on where you get it. It can, it can be around, I think it's around sort of three or four hundred, five, five hundred is too high. I think it's around sort of three, four hundred dollars. And of course, the advantage of that is an MRI can find things ahead of time that are, you know, you haven't had any symptoms with yet. If you get a full MRI, so you can do a lot more, you know, if you have the money or want to spend the money, a lot more preventative type things. Whereas in Canada and the United States, you wouldn't, unless you're filthy rich, you would not go and get an MRI unless you were trying to find a problem because you had a symptom for something. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool as well. Um, and the last item, and the so last the, one, the most important <laughs> to me anyway, most important to us, you know, we, we had nature as our number one thing for moving down here. Climate was number two. Um, and, you know, we're rainforest junkies and, and we love all the nature and plants and, and animals and things. And, you know, it's pretty sad what's happening in the world right now with, with climate change and how that's affecting, um, you know, you know, nature and the exploitation of resources. One thing that Ecuador has done, which really surprises me, and I'm just so happy about it. So in our last, uh, last election here, which um, uh, we just had uh, last month and there's gonna be the runoff in October, they had um, also a referendum on should um, we, should we still be taking oil out of the Amazon in this particular area where um, all of this oil was being extracted. And for a poor country, oil is a big thing. But the people of Ecuador chose pretty overwhelmingly, way over, over 50 percent, to stop the, uh, stop the oil uh, extraction. So that's going to be stopping soon, um, which, is, which is just amazing. Because um, if it was the government to decide uh, those types of things, First of all, it was great the government put the referendum out. It was actually, I believe, the the, uh, the equivalent of the Supreme Court in Ecuador that made that mandatory, so that the government couldn't couldn't not ask the people um, because it was such a such an important issue. If that was happening somewhere else, whether it was Europe or North America, there's so many lobby groups that affect that um, that that is that is something that would be um, you know stopped. Uh, so you couldn't have a referendum because the lobby group would be pushing so much more and you would have that uh, control. The other is the protection of the Galapagos and they keep doing that more and more and more and a lot of countries have traded debt for protection of that because they see that as a worldwide, res worldwide uh, resource. So, In a know, lot of the parks here, there's a lot of protected parks. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And yeah. they are truly protected parks, yeah. parks. A lot of times in Canada, they'll put a park out so far north and still allow, um, you know, um, extracting of, of lumber and mining within the park. Uh, anyway, there's our, <laughs> there's our thing. Anyway, hope everyone's doing great. <laughs> and uh, hope you liked our new intro if you got this far. And remember... Live the life you love. Take care till next time. Bye, guys.